We're talking about the Florida real estate market. And to do so, I'm interviewing Florida real estate broker and trainer, Phil Simonetta. And this video is a follow-up to last week's video where I addressed what was happening in the California housing market. And the reason why I chose Florida now is because it is said that Florida has moved into the number two most expensive real estate markets in the country. And I have a little treat in there, even though I don't like to talk about politics on my channel, I did get Phil's personal view on Florida's governor, Ron DeSantis, as to whether he thinks he'll be the next president of the United States. Hope you enjoy. All right, Phil, let's talk about the Florida housing market, man. You have been in the news, Florida, that is, uh, since really since the pandemic. Mm -hmm. You have, I believe, the most domestic migration of any other state in the country. So let me ask you, man, is it because of the political views? I think it has a lot to do with it. I think, and, and also no state tax. <laughs> I mean, you, you have corporations coming here. Um, political views, for sure. I think you have a lot of people... Um, not expressing themselves verbally, but look at their actions, right? So what does that mean for, let's just say, um, Floridians, you know, people that grew up in Florida, were born and raised in Florida. I mean, what do they think about all of the domestic migration? Are they happy seeing people come in the droves from California? Are they happy about seeing people coming from New York and flooding their state? Yeah. I, I don't know if it's as much as being happy, but they're being priced out. And what's happening is there's such an influx. Now, over the years, thousand people a day move to Florida, renters, buyers. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a state where people come, retire, move to. But what's happening is you're having a couple factors here. You're having a supply factor because there's not so much there for the people coming. You have a cash buyer factor because a lot of people coming here are coming with cash, buying houses or putting a significant amount down where local or locals don't have that. The average income is nowhere near what gives you the ability to do that in Florida. Um, the other factor you have now is costs. Your insurance is doubling. You know, your taxes are increasing. Um, there's, there's cost involved in these properties that the locals aren't making enough money to support. So you're having a lot of them being priced out unless they own a house or have a deal or have a 2% mortgage there. It's, it's tough for them, for the, for the local Floridians. Phil, you said that major corporations are moving to Florida. I mean, many people say that they don't know how they're going to continue to pay the high cost of living in Florida because there aren't enough jobs to sustain the growth. I mean, what's your opinion on that? Yeah. You know, to a point it's all service. There's all service jobs here. So there's, there's very little manufacturing. Um, I mean, down south, you have agriculture, right? Homestead down south of Miami, a lot of agriculture. Um, but when it comes to jobs, yeah, you're looking, uh, it, it, as long as the service industry stays strong, but the service industry isn't a highly affluent, profitable business. I mean, it's you're making tips, you're making smaller amounts of salaries, so the people who live here, it, it, it's a challenge for them. And you're having a lot of these um, types of individuals that are actually roommating, renting houses and, and living together um, and working different jobs and shifts. It's That's becoming more and more frequent from what I'm seeing. Yeah, we have, uh, you know, the fear of missing out, I guess. But, uh, you know, the, I want to look at this article in a second. But uh, that says that Florida is actually, you know, the real estate has – surpassed even new york city as far as valuation uh, yeah. but you know you've got i mean there's some major issues phil let i mean let's let's address these issues i mean floridians are having their homeowners insurance canceled mm -hmm. um by the thousands right i mean they're you know basically you have um property taxes going through the roof because your real estate values have almost doubled in the last five years um you guys have sinkholes uh, you have hurricanes. I mean, you were made national news because of a collapsing condominium building. I mean, why does anyone want to move to Florida? You know, I, I think a lot of that has to do with human nature. They don't do things that are logic, logically proven. <laughs> um, just look at the world, right? Um, Florida 
what the the ability in Florida and the attractiveness to, of Florida, I believe, is just a lifestyle. You know, and when people look look at the lifestyle of living on a yacht, is that practical? No, but you know, it's a lifestyle that people have. I mean, it's you know, beach communities, yachting communities. Um, you know, the other thing about Florida, I think people miss. There's a lot of international money here, and it's not just like like, like you're saying Floridians, Floridians. No, very few people you meet in Florida are from Florida. That's a fact. Go to Miami. Where are you from? No one's from Miami. No one's from Florida. You know, that that's something, you know, when people say Floridians. Now, if you go to Jacksonville, like my office is in Jacksonville, now you have more of your Floridians, right? You go to the Panhandle, Floridians. But when you start going to Tampa and you start going to Punta Gorda and you start going to Naples and you start going to Miami, Fort Lauderdale, you know, you're going to see – very few people in Florida are from Florida. You're from New Jersey, right? I mean, Philadelphia. That's where you, Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Okay, yeah. so I knew it was up north. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, why did you move to Florida? I moved to Florida for opportunity. Af- after I got divorced, I sold everything: my restaurants, my nightclubs. I sold everything, and I said, you know what? If I'm going to start over at what 35, 36 years old, whatever, whatever it was, I think I think I was like 33, something like that. I said, I'm going to go where I want to be. And I'm going to go where the money is. And I always said the international money is in Florida. I mean, if the Florida economy breaks, there's a lot bigger problems in the Florida economy. Yeah, well, get ready. All right, let's take a look at this article. Florida unsurps New York to become the second most valuable real estate market. Florida is now the second most valuable residential real estate market after California. Florida's fast-growing population throughout the pandemic contributed to the rise in real estate value in the state, where the market jumped to $3.8 trillion in June from about $2 trillion in January of 2020. You know, when we look at uh, Florida cities, you mentioned some areas where there were, you know, native Floridians and a lot of transplants or, you know, people that have moved there domestically, some of them second homes, some snowbirds. You know, some move there probably because of the tax, you know, um, structure. You know, like you said, you don't have state income tax, but things were different during the pandemic because everyone was working remotely. Now businesses are calling their people back. But it says Florida cities make up four of the six metro areas in the U.S. where housing market value has grown the most since the start of the pandemic. Tampa, 88.9%, Miami, 86.6%, Jacksonville, 82.4%, Orlando, 72.3%. All of the increases since the pandemic. Phil, are you guys preparing for a massive housing crash, or do you think the sky's never going to fall in Florida? I am, prepa- I am preparing for it. I don't think other people are. Other people, there's no reality. And you got to understand, there's never a crash unless people don't think it's going to crash, right? If everybody realizes it, there'll never be a crash, right? So you have investors, you have uneducated people that are investing and buying and flipping and doing different things. And it's coming. I mean, you, you can't have mortgage rates going eight, 9%. We got wars going on. You got inflation coming. I mean, you're going to see nine, nine and a half percent rates. I'm, I mean, it's, you can't afford that payment on a loan for people who are not buying cash. Like it, it, it's not a physical it's not possible when you have that, the insurance, the taxes, you know, just the daily living, your, your bills, your, your, your utilities, all the increases, people are priced out. You're you're right on that. Yeah. I believe that, um, you know, you say there won't be a crash unless people realize that there's a crash. I think people already realize that there's a crash. I think the ones that haven't realized it are the regulators. Mm -hmm. I think the the other people that haven't realized it yet is mainstream media. I think that they keep, you know, this narrative or this agenda and hoping that, I don't know, you know, magically people are going to have money. Oh, wait a minute. What did I just say? Magically, people are going to have money in their bank accounts. I guess they're hoping for more stimulus checks, uh, you know, from, uh, you know, uh, the government. And I'm not just picking on one administration or the next. I know people are quick to, you know, correct me. And I'm not trying to be political. When I ask you whether politics plays into the, you know, to the decision to move to Florida. But I do want to talk about Ron DeSantis. Not yet. Mm -hmm. Um, But anyway, when you see... um, 
people not having money in their bank accounts, I think it's fair to say that they know mm-hmm. it can't last forever. Let's check out this next article here. It says, Florida real estate forecast over the next five years, will it crash? And this is kind of what I'm talking about. First, it's important to notice that Florida housing market is not a monolithic entity. What state is would be my response to this. You know, uh, what they're meaning is that you can't just judge the market overall. And however, unless we have a major financial crisis on our hands like we do now, uh, however, unless you have, you know, the last several years where houses have been overpriced, unless you've seen the last five years, real estate prices go up by 80%. Certainly salaries are not keeping up. But anyway, there are different submarkets. Um, for example, Miami market is different from the Ocala market. Um, it also says that key sales data in August 2023, closed sales of existing family homes across the state totaled almost 23,000, 23, showing a 7.9 percent decrease compared to the same period in 2022. I think that is also pretty consistent around the country. I mean, sales are down. But here it says median sales prices in August. The statewide median sales price for single family existing homes in Florida was 415000 In today's world, that means that you could be paying somewhere around $4,000 a month for your mortgage. It says it's a 2 percent increase from the same month the previous year i mean when do you start do first of all do you believe that phil what's happened from august till now do you believe these numbers that it's a two percent increase or are uh we being lied to no it's definitely you're being lied to and i'll tell you if you look at the chart i sent you on fort lauderdale so fort lauderdale is, a, is one of the strongest markets in the country and if you look at august 2003 to august 2022 so from the beginning of the year to August 22, the sales, okay, the, the volume was $1.3 billion, a little more than that, but $1.3 billion. The volume for Fort Lauderdale, I'm talking condos now, this is just condos, in January 23 to August 23 is $749 million. That's a 42% drop in volume. It just well, What about values? What about values? Are Val- people going okay. to start seeing values drop? Yeah, they are. I mean, I'm the, the median sale price. Let's do the same thing. January 22 to August 22. Okay, your was uh, your average sale price was uh, eight hundred and twenty two thousand dollars. The average sale price in 23 from January 23 to August 23 is five eighty five eighty nine. So it's th- it, it's actually a twenty nine percent drop from 22 to 23 same time. So whatever they're telling you, I mean, numbers don't lie. Remember, people do. Numbers don't lie. So what happens, what happens to, um, you know, the real estate market in Florida when we start seeing 30% price drops? I mean, you have an inventory on the market right now. You know, when I was, uh, you know, going on the various sites, internet sites, I was noticing that there are a lot of price reductions. Phil, it doesn't seem like the price reductions that are happening are even quite enough to entice the buyers. Is this the... Is this now a new shift or a mentality in Florida that, you know, hey, we can't afford it or that the buyers are demanding that now these prices drop? Well, the the buyers have have slowed up. The buyers have dried up. They're not willing to spend the money that the sellers are asking, especially with the interest rates where they are, the insurance increases, the taxes. They're just not willing to pay it. One, because they can't pay it. They don't have it. A lot of these financed buyers – their debt ratios just went out the window because, you know, four months ago, if you bought a $400,000 house and you bought that same $400,000 house today, you're talking twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300 more a month, right? For that same house. It's not that they, they may still buy it. However, the bank's not letting them buy it because the debt ratio is out of whack. They can't afford it. So you're seeing more and more of that. And now they're trying to go to the adjustable rates and the, none of that's going to fix it. The, the, the new developers are doing the buy downs. I have sellers now. I have a seller that I'm working with about this close to putting a listing together, willing to put a two year buy down as incentive to, to, to sell the house. They're willing to buy the rate down for the buyer because they, they couldn't sell it twice now with different brokers. And now they want to do, and I'm in this conversation with them. 
So you have sellers getting creative. You're seeing you see the market switched. There's no more over over the appraisal buying. I mean, that's that's not happening. You know, there's two problems with what you just said, mm -hmm. right? Um, the housing industry, and look, I, I'm right there with you. I even said this on a, a previous video last week mm -hmm. where, you know, we're not getting the accurate numbers mm -hmm. nationwide on home prices. And one of the reasons is because sellers can do creative things and builders are number one for this. They're buying down rates and some of these buy downs for buying down 30 year fixed rate mortgages are costing the builder thirty, forty thousand dollars to yep. buy these mortgages down. That's not reflecting the comp price and Correct. keeping the, the the market prices high. So when you're talking about a seller buying down an adjustable rate mortgage, they're only willing to buy it down for two years. What kind of cost? So number one, it, the, the problem, they get back to what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Number one is that it's not showing up in the comparable sales. So it's not affecting the home values mm -hmm. the way that the media should be reporting it. Mm -hmm. Number one. Number two, that buyer not getting the price reduction, but getting some other type of seller concession or contribution mm -hmm. means that that buyer is paying higher property taxes than they really should be paying because the price of the home should have been corrected yeah. to make this happen. So they're paying a higher property tax for it. They're paying higher insurance premiums for it. You know, what's it cost the seller to buy down a, a mortgage rate for Two years. It depends on the deal. It depends on the deal and what the what Give the situation would be. You know, so for example, on, on this house here, it, it's a it's a four hundred and seventy five thousand dollar house. So if they did like a two year arm or a three year arm, they're not buying down the fixed rate. I mean that that's twenty, thirty grand. And the builders too, they're not buying down fixed rates. They're giving them five year arms, three year buy downs, three year arms, and they're buying it down. It might be costing them seven thousand to fifteen thousand. Builders in Florida may not be doing it, right. but if you go to Lennar, if you go to you go to these websites of these big builders, they have advertised four point nine nine percent thirty year fixed. So they're doing this, right? They're doing it. Yeah. So, uh, like an example for a buy down on a deal that I would be working like that, it probably cost them about seventy five, eighty five hundred dollars on on a three year arm kind of thing, a buy down, which is reasonable. Now, here's the thing. When I'm selling a house, when I put the listing in and make it closed, we have to disclose that. Builders don't. And that's why it's misleading for builders. Builders aren't in the MLS. I just closed two deals in Orlando, uh, new construction. Now, that's not even in the MLS, right? But what happens is when I sell a house, it asks any seller concession, any any anything down there. You have to put that in. So when that house is used as a comp for the appraiser, they calculate that into the appraisal value. But a builder doesn't do it. It's misleading, just like, just like the COs. It's misleading. If they're doing it, it's not public information. If we do it as brokers on a, on a third party sale, we must disclose it. And then it's, it's in the MLS. So when an appraiser uses that as a comp, that will be calculated into the purchase price. But it doesn't work on that builder side. You're right. So I've talked to appraisers and yes, they are to consider contributions number one it never reflects it at the tax level sure. it never adjusts the tax level of that home sale right if anybody's looking in zillow or any of the the online sites it's never showing up there unless they drop the price the sold price and the other thing is there are a lot of appraisers will tell you to what you just said a lot of appraisers will tell you that um and i and if you're an appraiser watching this you can comment it they don't know what the condition of the house is. So they may take something like this as an outlier and not consider it as a price correction or a comparable sale, right? Because they don't know what the scenarios are and how do they, how will they, you know, knock down a property by saying that the, um, how will they ever know that the seller contributed to a rate buy down in your MLS? Do you have, I mean, I can put a seller contribution or a seller concession in our MLS that says they were given $10,000 cash back to close. Mm -hmm. But how is it showing up in your system that that money went to a rate buy down? There's not a breakdown for it. There's not, it would just be, it would be contribution to closing costs is what it would be. Yeah. Yeah. It wouldn't yeah. be, it wouldn't, it wouldn't break it down that, that deep. Right. 
Right. right. And and is that really a seller contribution? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, well, uh, at, Again, I mean, yeah, I look, I I'm not trying to split the hairs, but I'm just saying that we're not accurately reporting the data. Phil, you are. I am. I mean, you and I were out there telling people, pump the brakes, slow down, look at everything. You and me, when we're advising buyers, we're having them look at the historical data mm -hmm. and the comps and things like that, whether an appraiser picks it up or not. Phil, do you know Barbara Corcoran? I don't know her personally, but I know of her. Yeah. What what is your opinion of Barbara? I, don't, I mean, to me, she kind of goes with the wind. Whatever's going to sell and get views, <laughs> you know. I mean, knowledge wise, I think she's been in the in the right place at the right time with a lot of right people. If that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah. Well, I mean, she obviously <laughs> sold her brokerage. She was yeah. a real estate broker in New York, and mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, I like to you know pull up this article for everybody because I have heard her, and look, I've I love. I love Barbara Corcoran as a businesswoman on Shark Tank. She's yeah. entertaining, you know, uh, probably one of one of my favorite sharks to listen to. Um, you know, I, I don't necessarily think that her what she says about the housing market is anything to put credence into. And sometimes I want to throw up when I hear her interviews. Sorry, Barbara. Uh, but Barbara Corcoran says the housing prices are going to go through the roof. Here's when housing market 2023, the 10 most overpriced housing markets in the U.S. Five are in Florida. I just wanted to plug that. That's mm -hmm. in this article. Uh, but anyway, Barbara Corcoran believes that there would be a major swing in the real estate market as soon as interest rates drop. The minute those interest rates come down, all hell's going to break loose and prices are going to go through the roof. It's going to be a signal for everybody to come back out and buy like crazy and the house prices will likely go up by 20%. Yeah. Phil, <laughs> what, I mean, what do you say to that? I, I think she's living in a world of like a top 10% of people's incomes. I mean, who's going to buy them? Where's the buyers coming from? They're they're The buyer, these houses go up another 20%. The buyer's income for 90% of Americans hasn't gone up. 4%. How are they, even if the rates come down, it's going to lower the, 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 the payments. She, I think what she's saying is they're going to get used to the payments today. So when the rates come down, the prices will be able to go up and you'll have the same payment you have today. Does that make sense? I think that's what she, ha, I mean, that's the only thing that ha, makes sense to me. I mean, that's. Has anybody told her that people aren't affording the payments of today? Well, the people she's hanging around are, 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 are I guess are buying. I don't know. But, but I'm saying in general, the general public, they can't afford it. And I, I see what she's saying because once once you like once a price hits and a payment, people get comfortable with it, then they're there. Very rarely do you see stuff come back down, right? Like in a grocery store and things like that, right? So when it comes to housing though, I, I don't people are are start that's why the buyers are dried up. That's why things are sitting on the market right now. You know, that's why you know the, the loans aren't being made. Now they're you know the other the, the one scary thing though, I gotta say, Todd is if these uh, lenders, if they start going with 50 and 60 year mortgages, like they're talking about, like in, there, there, there's some talk going on. Now, if you go 50, 60 year mortgage, you know, rates, it's going to stretch you out and you'll be able to afford more house. Are people dumb enough to do that is the question. Hey, I can afford, I can afford X amount a month. However, they do it with cars. People are paying $700 a month for a car, right? I mean, man, when I, when I was younger, $700 a month, you can get a Ferrari. Right. I mean, now, I mean, you're, you're getting, you know, F 150s that are all souped up, set six, seven, eight hundred dollars a month, you know, on six, seven year loans. I mean, they're out there and people are doing it. So, does that mean, will people do the same thing with housing? If they find a way to finance it to make the numbers work for them, which maybe they'll lease houses, who knows what's going to happen? Maybe they'll do housing leases. Maybe, maybe they'll change the structure of how you pay for a house. You know, I, I don't put anything past government institutions or, you know, people in those areas, this industry, like we talked earlier, may, you know, may actually be in for like a complete recall. Uh, re I mean, it's starting with NAR, right? It's starting with NAR. So um, who knows where we're going to be in two, three, four, five years. All I know is we need to be able to adapt, right? Adapting is going to be the key for us to succeed. There's always going to be a need.
You know, when we say when Barbara says all hell's going to break loose, I think she's right, but I don't think for the right reasons. Right. You know, one of the things that's happening right now, and maybe Barbara is not aware of this, uh, but uh, the government has really carried mortgages in America. We would not have a housing shortage right now had interest rates not been free almost to allow people to buy up two and three extra houses. Uh, there's a war on landlords, right? Mom and pop landlords right now where tenants across the country are unionizing and uh, weaponizing against landlords. And some people say that's a good thing, but there's a lot of inventory that I feel from real estate investors that are going to put them on the market, Airbnbs down, but that's not what I really want to talk about and focus on. What people aren't talking about right now is that there are mortgage buybacks happening right now that we're not even seeing that are affecting lenders. Mortgage originations are down to a 1980s level, right? So we have lenders that are struggling, keeping banks that are struggling, keeping their doors open, servicers that now that that pandemic money is getting ready to end unless they create more in November. Um, A lot of people don't realize that hundreds of thousands of people this year have still been bailed out of their mortgage payments, um, you know, uh, not being able to pay their mortgages or their taxes, their property insurance. But the big thing is right now that people don't understand mortgages are being sold or being bought back from the loan originator because the investors are saying something's wrong with this loan. You didn't underwrite it properly or whatever. Mm -hmm. We didn't have the right details. So now these investors are giving back the loans to the lenders and the lenders now are taking a loss on these loans that are coming back and they're selling them again to investors for 68 cents on a dollar, right? 70 cents on a dollar. This is happening right now. People don't know it. This is going to get worse when these mortgages and these originators that push this agenda to buy a house now, regardless of what was happening with the home prices, regardless of what was happening with unemployment now that we're about to see that rise. These investors are saying, you got to buy this loan back. And then they're reselling it for for now again, dimes on a dollar, and that might end up a disaster. So so the investors wised up from 07, 08, right? They're, they're exercising the buyback when these things aren't packaged right. You know, they were packaging the option arms with a paper, right? They were pop, like back in the day. So that's what caused the collapse right now. What they're doing now is you got to get this. The bank is selling it to the investors. They're getting their two, three points. The investors are selling it back to the bank for, you know, or the bank's buying it back, right? They're probably not paying the same amount. They probably still made money on it. There's still probably a transaction, money being changed. Now the bank's selling it again for 68 cents on a dollar. The second sale is all profit for the bank. You know, if you look at that, you don't think so? They're losing money on every deal. It was just reported in the Mortgage Bankers Association wow. that the lenders are losing, um, you know, pre-tax loss of um five, i think it was 540 some dollars a sale that's um that's even backward looking data um they're saying that right now uh fannie mae and freddie mac the two government sponsored entities or enterprises that uh created these regulations in 2016 mm-hmm. to protect the investors because so many of them got whacked by these loan originators actually there's three and I'm, i don't want to dive into it because that's mm-hmm. for a different video but there are you know really uh three ways that you analyze these loans that are being sold to investors and if it falls into two of these three categories, meaning that they didn't do what the investors or Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac are saying, that they didn't do certain things right when they qualified the loan. They have to buy those loans back and they had to pay the investors a fee to buy the loan. So mm-hmm. I think that wow. I think that what what we're going to see here is uh is, you know, more lender and mortgage collapse just like we saw in the great financial crisis. Yeah. I want to ask you a question, Phil, uh, because, you know, when I think of Florida and I think of the sunshine state, um, I think about, you know, you and you had mentioned it to me before, how people don't make a whole lot of money in Florida. You know, where are the jobs coming from? How can they pay the, the money? What do they do for a living? A lot of them are farmers, mm-hmm. right? Agriculture. Yeah. Um, what's going on? There's an article here 
in the uh, floridatrend.com that says Florida's battered orange growers are cashing in on the housing boom. This was just October 16th. It says Florida farmers have spent nearly two decades fending off plagues, freezes, and storms that decimated their orange crops. A growing number of them have had enough. A booming real estate market led to conclude it would be more profitable for them to sell their land than to continue to cultivate the Sunshine State's signature fruit. The number of acres dedicated to growing oranges in Florida declined by more than half in the last 23 years. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, do, do you think uh, what, what's going to happen to the Florida fruit market? Yeah, I've actually witnessed this with my own eyes. Um, in Davenport, Florida, Polk County, I had some property there. And around it was three orange groves. And those three orange groves sold to three different builders. And they're building as we speak. Like they, they re- literally tore the trees out, did what burned them. They put them in a pile and they burn them. And it's, it's happening because the last few years, there's been issues. Like last year, there was a big freeze. There was a freeze and it came in and wiped out a bunch of the crop. And these orange orchards were just let they they weren't maintained they were overgrown they just it was just a matter of time and they just gave in so you know the aren't now the orange crop is more towards the center of the state it's not down south down south is the tomatoes and the, you know down down homestead and that like that all, all agriculture is down there but it's in the middle of the state is the orange is the orange crop um yeah i mean it, it's more profitable for the farmers to sell cash out and move on and I think that's happening everywhere. I don't think it's just Florida. I mean, I think you have that happening throughout the country. I mean, farmers are being bought out and they're just developing. And and you got to understand for the government, that's great, right? Because now they're going from the agriculture exemption on the taxes to creating a tax base for homes. Do you know how much more money? I mean, multi, multi, multi millions in taxes. You have an orange field. They may be paying X amount of dollars in, t- in taxes. That turns into a development. They're getting hundreds. Of, they're getting millions yeah. and millions for each property. They made sure that the farmers weren't making any money, and really- uh, you know, put them in that position. So mm-hmm. let's talk about. You know, a lot of people think Ron DeSantis is going to be the next president of the United States. I mean, he obviously, uh, you know, is the governor for Florida. You know, a lot of people think he's done a great job. Um, he certainly has uh, added to. Uh, you know, and I look, I, I'm, I have nothing against the guy, but, you know, it, it, many would look at it and say, well, geez, you know, how do the Floridians, how are they happy with, uh, you know, the way that you know, home prices have gone up 80% in value that now they can't afford to live, that they're renting and, you know, starting to think about living in campers instead of houses. Uh, you know, now you know, we're watching developers take the farmland and, uh, you know, where are we going to get? I guess they'll be happy when we're importing more uh, from other countries instead of growing these fruit and providing, you know, affordable food and things like that for the American people. What is your opinion on? I, look, I, yeah. I don't I don't want to get, you know, I, we're going to do it anyway. What's your opinion on Ron DeSantis <laughs> in yeah. Florida? And will he be the next president of the United States? Um, Ron DeSantis is a very smart and effective guy. He gets things on. I mean, if you look through COVID, you look through, I mean, we didn't close, we closed a little bit in the beginning, but he kept everything open. We, we, he left, he let us, he let us succeed. He let us live. Right. And he didn't, didn't go with all the craziness, uh, the, the, those, the, the modern colonial treatments and things like that. I, I had, to, I had COVID. I used that thing. It, it was gone in two days. It was crazy. I mean, I don't know. I can't say I'm not a doctor, but it worked. Right. Um, I don't understand how he hired stupid people to run his presidential campaign. <laughs> So a guy who's that smart and effective that can beat the government, cut the red tape. I mean, he has the, he was a jag, he's a jag attorney from the I guess, Navy or whatever. He, I mean, he's a smart guy. He knows how to cut through red tape. However, I, I think he ruined his career by hiring the wrong people. They make him look like a fool, you know, and then, you know, loyalty problems, you know, like, you know, and, and listen, I'm not a, poli- po- I'm not a political guy. Like I, I don't like any party. They're all criminals. If you ask me, you know, but you know, things are done and lines were crossed. And once you, that shows your character and that shows your intentions. And when you cross lines and you do things to people that have helped you and, and different things that does, it doesn't matter what you do in the future. It's what you did and what will you do again? Right. Just somebody does something wrong. That's on their record, right? 20 years from now, it might not be so, such a big deal, but 
if they're ever put in that same situation again, would they do the same thing again? Right. And, and that to me, I don't want somebody leading me that is going to go back on their word or has no loyalty or at the moment puts themselves ahead. A true leader takes a beating if they have to, to lead their people. And I just yeah. think everything was opportunistic for him. I mean, just the, going along with it, the, the test was what he's doing now. You know, everything else, yeah, he made the right decisions. But the test is what, he, what, is, he, what is he doing now on that character level. And the way things are being done, I, 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 wouldn't, I don't support him to be president of the United States. He won't be president of the United States. I'm pretty sure of that. Yeah, well, I appreciate your honesty with that, man. And look, it's uh, it's a pleasure chatting with you, Phil. Uh, and I do want to uh, end with uh, one final question that is the real, you know, uh, I guess, um, plug for this video. Uh, but uh, all of Phil's information is in the show notes. He has a YouTube channel. He's a real estate broker. And uh, guys, I encourage you to cruise on over to his channel, uh, subscribe to it and uh get to know him a little bit uh him and i do have we share the same sentiments you know and you know i think that we both believe that we're in for some rocky times ahead but the let's go ahead and and just kind of get this out of the way man are we going to see a housing market crash in the next 12 months i i say we do and i i mean i, I see rates between nine and a half and ten if, if this war and this stuff keeps going on, inflation is going to go up. Cost of goods are going to go up because transporting them. And when that happens, you have the unemployment going up even more. And buy, buyers are going to go away. Inventory is coming on. Airbnb houses, um, foreclosures. Inventory is going to, going to go up 20 30%. I, I'm telling you, you're going to see, I would say, 15 to 30%, depending on where you are. Has to. It's mathematics. All right, man. Well, look, I really appreciate your time. And I hope everyone gets has gotten a lot of value out of uh, our conversation today and we'll be talking soon yeah glad to be here and spend some time with you appreciate it thank you so much guys i hope you're not mad at me for mentioning that ron DeSantis thing some people they go either way as to whether they feel he's done a good job for the state as many floridians as we discussed believe that the domestic migration has crippled their ability to afford a roof over their head i'd love to know your thoughts and comments you can drop them below i read every one of them Thanks so much for watching. If you like the video, you can smash that thumbs up. It'll let Phil and myself know that you did. And as always, guys, please don't keep this content all to yourselves. The share button is below. It helps the algorithms push our video out even to more people when you like, comment, and share. So see you next time. Sachs Realty, Maryland broker number 607720, office number 443-318-4514, equal housing opportunity.